Welcome everybody to the New Orleans Saints training camp show right here on CST for Thursday, August 27th. I'm Carolyn Gonzalez. I'll be joined shortly by my co-host John DeShazer. As we highlight the social and racial injustice that goes on throughout our country, the message in Saints practice today was clear. It is bigger than football. No, I mean, look, it, it's just something we decided to do last night um, to honor him. Uh, whether or not everybody in this country understands what's going on is one topic, but the ability to, to make change and to move forward in a positive way is a different matter. And I, I think, uh, you know, we're right in the middle of what is an election year. You know, we had the uh, convention, the Democratic convention last week, this week, the Republican convention, all of those things uh, are taking place at the same time. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, it, it's, it's never easy. And, and yet these topics sometimes aren't easy. And, and yet, uh, you know, the, there's an old adage, the obstacle is the way, and, and it's not going around. It's, it's understanding and going through it and, uh, and addressing it, um, even if it means uncomfortable conversations and topics that, that may make people somewhat uneasy. Uh, came about, we had a team meeting. Uh, it was something that was just, you know, that was decided above us that we, that we were going to wear it, you know, honor. Um, but that's not our, uh, that's not our main thing that we're doing. We're trying to do some other stuff, you know, to honor him and, and, and honor everything that's going on. Uh, just put a word to it and just, you know, just let everybody know, you know, that we're not going to stand for that. It's a good start, but I feel like we got to do more as well. And so uh, when Sean Payton, he called the team me last night and told us um, that we're going to, you know, put his name on our helmets. He also said that he's open for discussion of anybody bringing any ideas of trying to do more as well. So I think that we're all going to get together and see if we can, we can do more, uh, do more than that as well. But I think it was a good start. We all don't know what truthfully the right thing to do, but we all know that emotionally we're drained. We're drained of talking about it. We're drained of, of, of it happening over and over again. We're drained of trying to make a change, but change not coming. We're drained of it happening over and over again. We're drained uh, emotionally, uh, just emotionally drained. And it's sad to see it because uh, what a lot of people don't understand is you. Well, why are you drained? It's because if you're in the same situation, you know that that could easily be you in that situation. That could easily be one of my loved ones in that situation. You say, oh, yeah, resist the rest, but... It's like, at the end of the day, okay, oh, yeah, uh, he resisted arrest, he got in his car, but to be shot seven times in the back, that's just ridiculous. When there's three or four cops there that could have tackled this guy to the ground. And if anybody says that 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 that, that should have happened in that situation, they're out of their mind. And so that that's just draining the thing, because every time I see that situation, I say that could easily been me. You know, that could easily be one of my cousins. That could easily be one of my uncles, you know. And so, and the reason why I say that is it could have easily been me because I'm an African-American in America, in which, um, which it's sad to say, it seems just like not all cops, but a majority of these cops, you know, uh, when they see African-American, I feel like they have no value in life. Uh, no, They don't value our life as much as they uh, value a Caucasian or, or anybody else. And so I, that's just what I believe. And... Uh, you know, and what I've seen uh, in terms of these videos and stuff and how they're just brutally murdering um, and, and just taking taking their pain or whatever it is out on them. J.D., some powerful thoughts there from Saints coaches and, and players today. What what are your thoughts on everything that happened at practice today? Well, it's, it's hard to not be in agreement with a lot of what Emmanuel Sanders said. Um, as a black man, it's draining. Uh, it's emotionally uh, flexing each and every day uh, where you wake up with a high, you see good news, and by the time, you know, 12 hours later, eight hours later, four hours later, uh, you have an emotional low. It's draining. Uh, it's tiring. It's frustrating uh, when you continually see these acts continue to dot our country. And, and, you know, to put athletes in position to really have to step out on this. And, and look, their collective voices is powerful, and I'm glad that they're expressing their frustration, and I'm glad that they're leading the charge for a better America. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, 
you know, they can't be the only ones. It can't just stop with them. Obviously, it takes a collective effort. It takes all of us. So it'll take me. It'll take you, Caroline. It'll take, you know, our videographer, producer, Brendan. Uh, it'll take all of us because they are lighting a pathway by shining the light on these problems and making them, you know, really prominent throughout the nation. But the rest of us will have to join them in doing the hard work. And I think, you know, that's the, that's the main thing you take out of it when they say, hey, there's more that we want to do. Hopefully, collectively, there will be more that these players and this organization will do. And we saw a united front, J.D., from a lot of professional sports teams yesterday in the NBA, uh, WNBA, MLS, MLB. We saw that united front. So Emmanuel Sanders, like you said, said it earlier today, uh, his job is to come and play football. But now this is something that players and everyone has to step up to the plate and deal with. So that is where we are. Um, and we will get more into Saints football and training camp practice today as we continue on the CST show. When we come back, we will hear from Saints linebacker Craig Robertson, don't go anywhere. Welcome everyone back to the Saints training camp show right here on CST. I'm Caroline Gonzalez, joined by my co-host John DeShazer. JD, linebacker Craig Robertson spoke earlier today. He's a player that we've seen uh, just constantly bring the energy, bring the hype. He is the hype man for the Saints team. Has that lacked at all in practice with no fans or has that continued? Uh, that's just who he is, and, and I'm going to give him a little shout-out here. It's going to hurt me to say it, but, you know, he's a mem member of the Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. So, you know, a lot of guys in his fraternity, you will see them behave somewhat like Craig. Now, the thing is, Craig takes this to the football field, and he's fun to watch. He's fun to be around, and I can't imagine his teammates not being able to plug into him and get some of that energy that he exudes. I know that hurt you a little bit, J.D., so way to take the high road. Uh, Craig Robertson spoke after practice today on the energy that he brings to this team. I wake up, man, I got it, you know? I mean, I've, I've always been like that. Like, you can go back to when I was in high school, middle school. It's, like, it's, it's, it's something that, I don't know, can't really teach it. Like, you got to have it. You can fake it, you know? But, I mean, people can see through that, you know? And uh, I have a Celsius in the morning, so I want to throw that out there. Thank you, Will. Lutz, you know, Zach Wood, they gave me a Celsius sometime in the morning. But I'm already gassed up before that. It's, you know, like when you realize, like I, I, I say this all the time, John, like I love playing football. You know, I love being around my brothers. And training camp is tough. You know, like you wake up, you're tired. The locker room is quiet. Training room is quiet when you get here in the morning. And, I mean, I love to be that person, you know, liven it up, put a smile on everybody's face. And just realize, like, man, like, we're all blessed to be here. And it could be a thousand times worse, you know. So I just kind of live by that every day. Well, Craig Robertson's been a captain for the Saints squad for three years now. Following practice today, he talked about the advice that he's given to the young linebackers. Yeah, so obviously I came out lockout year, so uh, I didn't even get an invite to training camp. So I, I guess you can say I came into the league through the back door. Uh, practice squad and really just, you know, earn my take year after year. And just telling those guys, the young guys, like, man, like nobody cares about your situation, right? Because the show goes on regardless. And the faster you realize that, the faster you don't have any pity for yourself, and the more that you enjoy your day every day, then you realize how special it is to be here where you are. And, hey, like, you get an opportunity, you only get one opportunity to do this. So you better put your best foot forward. And that's pretty much what I preach every day. Uh, having fun while you do it, uh, that's been a huge thing for me. Like, it's a kid's game. You know, we're just grown men who get to do it. And if you're not having fun playing football, then you really shouldn't be playing. All right, don't go anywhere. You are watching the Saints training camp show on CST. We, when we come back, we'll hear more from John DeShazer on who was in, who was out of practice, and some of the highlights he took away from today. <laughs> Welcome back to the New Orleans Saints training camp show on CST. I'm Caroline Gonzalez, joined by my co-host, John DeShazer. JD, you are our eyes and ears, of course, as always, there at the Oshner Sports Performance Center. Who is there? Who is absent from practice today for the Saints? 
Well, the key returner or the key participant, I guess, as a returner, Drew Brees. He didn't practice yesterday, but today he got back from a day of rest, looked really sharp out there. Uh, guys who were missing was you know, Michael Thomas didn't work out today. Um, probably a rest day for him. Also, safety Malcolm Jenkins, third consecutive day that Malcolm was not on the field in practice and rookie linebacker Zach Bond. And the thing about Zach, unfortunately, is he's a rookie. He's missing a lot of valuable time on the field uh, for a rookie. So, you know, this acclimation period, you know, these have been three practices that he has not been able to receive. So hopefully he'll get back on the field pretty soon. JD, were there any highlights that stood out to you today in particular? I saw a few on uh, social media today, but any highlights that stood out to you? Well, biggest thing that jumped out to me was uh, Juwan Johnson, a uh, rookie, uh, made a diving catch. Now, the situation was they were in team drills uh, and the defense jumped offside. So a free play for the offense. And Drew Brees, being as he is, went ahead and ran through with the play and he just chucked one deep. And Juwan Johnson, uh, from the left side, cutting across the right to the middle, uh, made a diving layout catch uh, that was spectacular. And if you're a guy in his position, those are the kinds – of plays that you need to make in order to garner attention and open eyes and hopefully the, the kind of plays that you can make that'll help you stay. All right, JD, thanks so much for providing your analysis. As always, that'll do it for today's show right here on CST. We'll be back tomorrow with more coverage of your New Orleans Saints as they continue training camp on Friday.